Excitement in Kuriga community as students reunite with parents 22 days after abduction. Federal government subsidizes high fares with 90 billion naira. Nigerians mark Good Friday amid biting economy. On the international scene, United Nations top court orders Israel to ensure unhindered provision of essential supplies. Hello again and welcome to the news update on Trust Television. At this hour, I'm Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for joining us. Another news in full, hundreds of residents in Kuriga, Chikun local government area of Kaduna State gathered on Thursday to celebrate the return of 137 school children who were rescued from the clutches of bandits. It was an emotional scene as the community rejoiced over the safe return of the children. They were accompanied by a heavy security detail, including armed military and police personnel, ensuring their safe journey back home as they arrived in the village amid cheers and tears of joy. Earlier, we spoke to trustee Visbelo Musa on the development. One of seven Kuriga school children uh, have been reunited to their families at Kuriga community uh, in Chikun local government area in Kaduna State. Uh, the Kaduna State uh, Deputy Governor Hadida Sabo Balarade uh, led the government officials or delegation rather uh, to the community on Thursday afternoon to uh, reunite, uh, reunite their children uh, with their families. Uh, people in the community came out in hundreds uh, to receive their children. Uh, the situation yesterday uh, was that of jubilation because after about three weeks that uh, the kidnappers have stormed the community, uh, abducted their children, uh, they are seeing their children now uh, for the first time. So the situation uh, in the uh, Korea community is that of uh, uh, jubilation. One of the, uh, uh, I spoke to Kabiri Musa, uh, told me that he's happy after about three weeks. Uh, he's now being reunited uh, with his uh, son. So the parents are happy. Uh, you can see from the video, uh, the whole community uh, it was happy. There was Indeed. jubilation because after three weeks uh, that the kidnappers abducted their children, they are now seeing their children uh, for the first time. They were all reunited uh, with their children. Because what happened uh, then at the government house, uh, you know, there was apprehension of because of that conflicting figures. So the, the parents were thinking maybe uh, some of the parents' uh, children are still in the hands of kidnappers. But now uh, the committee said uh, uh, this 137 is the exact number that we are uh, kidnapped uh, in the school uh, by the kidnappers. Trustee Vez reporter Bello Musa from Kaduna State there. Parents of a young man killed by a stray bullet allegedly fired by military personnel in the ancient city of Kasana, recently are demanding for justice. The incident involving 15-year-old Abdul Salam Umar happened last Saturday following a clash between some military personnel and a group of youth in the city. Trustee Vis Abdullahi Yamadi tells us more. Disagreement between the soldiers and a horse rider ignited the clash. Residents alleged that the soldiers went back to their barracks and mobilized their colleagues to the area and started beating people and shooting randomly, leaving many residents with various degrees of injuries. Already, the remains of Abdul Salam Umar has been laid to rest at Old Dantakum Cemetery in Kasna Metropolis amid sorrow and tears by family and friends of the deceased. Father of the deceased 75-year-old Umar Lawal is appealing to the authorities concerned to bring to justice the soldiers that killed his 15-year-old son, Abdul Salam Umar, who is an SS two students of Kasana College. Umar Lawal, who was emotionally disturbed following the tragic incident, narrates how he received the news of the event few minutes after Abdul Salam left him at home for an errand. My 
My son, Abdurrahman, came to me with some requests that fateful night, which I gave him some money, and he left. Few minutes after, I was told that he was shot dead. To all those who can support me, kindly tell them to do me a favor. I'm demanding justice for Abdurrahman. Simple. However, the senator representing Kasuna Central Senatorial District, Abdulaziz Yaradwa, promised to follow the matter to its logical conclusion. So we came here to condole with the family of uh, uh, a boy of uh, 12 years old that we just, I just learned about yesterday that was killed here by security operatives. Right now we cannot determine uh, the security operatives that came here you know, to shoot indiscriminately, thereby, you know, killing the small boy and injuring another person who is uh, lucky to be alive. Other family members also vowed to follow up the matter to its logical conclusion because the late Abdul Salam was not by the roadside and also was not among the youth that clashed with the soldiers. This young man was lucky to have escaped death by one of the stray bullets which penetrates his shop, leaving some traces. Some human rights groups angered by the incident lamented over the frequency of attacks on civilians by armed uniformed men, especially around Kofar Guga area of Kazuna Metropolis. It is part of the soldier's culture. When they come to the civilian, they just keep a, a, a behaving like. I don't know how to call them, but... Observers say it is advisable for the military to concentrate on the current war against banditry and other crimes other than engaging unarmed civilians into clashes leading to frequent loss of lives and property. Yeah. Abdullahi Izumayamadi, yeah. Trust oh, Television News, Kazana. Around 100 inmates, including those facing death row at the Kano Correctional Center, have appealed for clemency from the state government and the state committee on prerogative of mercy. This group includes individuals serving life sentences, those with lengthy prison terms, inmates with severe medical conditions, elderly prisoners, and others. According to Musbahu Mata, the state correctional center public relations officer the list of inmates seeking clemency was presented to the chairperson of the Prerogative of Mercy Committee, Bebeji, by the controller of the State Command, Suleimani Nuwa. This occurred after the committee's visit to the Maximum Security Custodial Center in Janguzo, Kanu. Bebeji assured the inmates that the government would consider their appeals, taking into account their good conduct and productivity during their time in custody. The federal government has allocated 90 billion naira to subsidize the 2024 pilgrimage to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, according to sources within the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria. Without this subsidy, each pilgrim would have been required to contribute an additional 3.5 million naira to the initial fare of 4.9 million naira. A top official at the presidency confirmed the government's financial support for the Hajj exercise. The Nahakon attributed the fair hike to Nigeria's foreign exchange crisis and had sought support from state governors. Kano State has already committed to subsidizing the fare by 500,000 naira per pilgrim, while the exact amount released by the federal government was not confirmed. Sources indicated that the 90 billion naira allocation was plausible. Now to security matters. The police in Delta State have confirmed that Clement Ikolo Ogenerukewe, the traditional ruler of Ewu Kingdom, so surrendered himself following being declared wanted in connection to the killing of 17 soldiers in a Kwama community. Alongside him, the President General of Ewu, Professor Ekpeko Atho, 
and others were also declared wanted. The Delta State Police Public Relations Officer, S.P. Bright Edafe, confirmed the report, saying the monarch was handed over in Asaba on Friday morning. The Jigawa State Police Command has apprehended suspected criminals, including armed robbers, cable vandals, and motorcycle snatching syndicate members. Police Commissioner A.T. Abdullahi disclosed this while parading the suspects at the command's headquarters in Ditsi. Abdullahi recounted an incident where a resident was attacked and robbed of his phone, leading to the arrest of two suspects. In another operation based on credible intelligence, Detectives and vigilante members raided a Fulani camp in Kiawa local government area, resulting in the arrest of two suspects and the recovery of firearms, ammunition, motorcycles and other items. The recovered arms were linked to a robbery incident that resulted in the death of three individuals in burning Kudu town. The suspects confessed and efforts are underway to apprehend other syndicate members. The Commissioner assured the public of the command's dedication to maintaining law and order and expressed gratitude to the state government for its continuous support. Away from security matters, President Bola Tinubu extends Easter greetings to Christians in Nigeria and worldwide. Acknowledging the significance of the season, commemorating the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his victory over sin and death. The president urges Christians to embrace love, sacrifice, and compassion, drawing inspiration from Christ's example. Tinubu emphasizes the importance of selflessness and unity for national development, citing Jesus' sacrifice as a lesson for leaders and Nigerians alike. Despite facing economic challenges and implementing reforms such as ending fuel subsidies and currency controls, Tinubu remains committed to the nation's prosperity and urges patience from the citizens. President Tinubu acknowledges the resilience and sacrifices of Nigerians, emphasizing their importance for economic recovery. Good Friday, observed as a public holiday in Nigeria, is a solemn occasion for Christians. It is a time for penance, prayer, and fasting, during which believers abstain from certain foods and pleasures seeking forgiveness for their sins. In Makadi, a cross-section of Christians while speaking to Trust TV called for peace and mutual coexistence among all Nigerians. Trust TV's Jimmy Azande reports. Good Friday marks the culmination of the Passion Week, commemorating the day Jesus died and was buried in Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago. For Christians, it is a time of solemn reflection and a pursuit of God's peace. And then begin to check about the cultural dominance of this place is uh, thick people. And then they, they, they love yam so much and they love meat so much. So within this time, anything that you love so much, anything that is so much attached to you, it's more like trying to make a sacrifice of it, anointing it. They also say on Good Fridays, certain delicacies are abstained from, as it is tradition with the Christian community in Benue State. These include meat and yam which are popular on the Benway menu. As a teacher of the faith, I should live by example. So I am expected to abstain from food at least from 6 to 12 uh, p.m. before I eat. And today, throughout today, I will not eat meat. To pay respect to the crucified Jesus who died on the Good Friday, good in the sense that he died for our salvation and uh, we know that we reverence history and abstain some of these things that we take to dear to our hearts and so we give a respect to uh, the crucified Jesus on this day of abstinence and Good Friday. First, forgiveness. And then the, the joy of forgiveness is not the person you are forgiven, but you. Because the burden, of, the burden you carry when somebody offends you, when you see this person, you are triggered with anger. But when you forgive, when you see that person, it is joy that comes to your mind. Most churches today observe the passion play, representing the traverse of Christ leading up to his death, burial, and eventual resurrection. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. You're watching the news update on Trust Television. Still ahead. Gombe man walks over nine kilometers for free Ramadan meals amid food shortages. 
more news when we return. Just stay with us. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. Let's take a look at our top stories again. Excitement in Kuriga community as students reunite with parents 22 days after abduction. Nigerians mark Good Friday amid biting economy. And now moving on to more stories. Despite the extensive efforts made by state governments in Kasina, Kano and Jigawa to alleviate the current hardships among Nigerians during the Ramadan season, the distributed palliatives have largely failed to make a significant impact on the vulnerable population. Many believe the program is targeted towards a burned population as many more in rural communities remain neglected at a time of need. In this report, Hassan Kohli tells the story of a man who travels many kilometers to receive free meals to break his fast and feed his family. Meet Amadou Galadima, a 49-year-old resident of Jerkum. He has called this place home for quite some time now. Every morning, Amadou faces a harsh reality of having nothing to provide for his family's breakfast. With 13 mouths to feed, the fresher weighs heavily on him, desperate to ensure his loved ones to have something to break their fast with during Ramadan. He embarks on a daily journey of 9.5 kilometers from Jerkum to Dukku, the headquarters of Dukku local government area in Gombe State, just to collect food for Iftar. It is a struggle he faces each day, driving by love and determination to care for his family. <laughs> I was once a farmer and a businessman, but as time went on, I lost everything, leaving me to rely on donors to feed my 12 family members. In this holy month of Ramadan, I have to go to Doku to get food for Iftar. I usually ask a table from tanker drivers to give me a lift, and sometimes I cannot even get one to help me get to Doku. With all this, it is hardly possible for us to get any palliatives from the government. As you can see, all I am getting is from non-governmental organizations. Galadima wishes to have a means of livelihood and health for others too. I wish I could get something to depend upon and which will help me take care of my family. Should I get a helping hand? I could do many things like businesses or farming as I used to. I am really not enjoying the current condition and I want to be helping people too. One of the non-governmental organizations engaged in such programs expressed the urgent need to include many more individuals in the Ramadan feeding program in the local government area. They emphasized that there is a significant number of people are in desperate need of assistance during this time. So now we we usually have like 350, 380 uh, iftar meals. Some people usually come, some even since morning, and you know we start we we distribute the food in the evening around five, sometimes even five thirty. But you may notice that around ten o'clock some people are waiting at the home, at home, waiting for the food to be prepared and given to them. So as such, the suffering people are going through, especially uh, during this time in this country, you find out that as we prepare the food, the number of people waiting for the food are even more than the number of the food that we, 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 we are able to, 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 to bring out. The current situations appears to suggest that the recent feeding program and palliatives initiated by the state governments have had little to no effect on alleviating the hardship faced by Nigerians. A report from Global Fatness and the Nigerian government indicated that a staggering 26.5 million Nigerians are projected to experience food insecurity this year, highlighting the severe stage of poverty and hunger in the country. Hassan Kohli, Trust TV News, Gwambi. We'll take it away from Nigeria now and now to an update on the war on Gaza. In a significant move, the top United Nations court 
has ordered Israel to ensure the unhindered provision of essential Illegal supplies to Palestinians throughout Gaza. The International Israel Court of Justice issued legally binding orders urging Israel to cooperate fully with the United the Nations to facilitate urgent basic services and humanitarian aid delivery. This ruling really follows a case Israel brought by South Africa accusing Israel of genocide in response to attacks by Hamas. Despite Israel's objections, the ICJ emphasized the importance of ensuring aid reaches Gaza amid ongoing military restrictions and hostilities. Israel was instructed to prevent actions by its military that could harm Palestinians' rights under the Genocide Convention. And finally in sports, Nigerian National League side Inter FC of Lagos created an upset yesterday following their 2-0 win over Nigeria Premier Football League side Sporting Lagos at the Mobolaji Johnson Arena in the semi-final of the Lagos FA Cup. After narrowly escaping defeat at the hands of Box to Box FC on Tuesday in the quarter-final via penalty shootout win, the self-styled noisy Lagosians failed to keep their momentum as they fell to Inter Lagos. The pride of Lagos took the lead in the 11th minute, courtesy of Tony Obia, who from the edge of the box, Superbly finished a pass from Abubakar Tahir. With the early lead, Inter Lagos kept attacking for more and it paid off in the 45th minute. This time, Tahir got a well-deserved goal. Obia, the goal scorer from his half of the pitch with a long pass combined with the left winger to score the second goal of the encounter. And on that note, we've come to the end of the news update at this hour. You can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentaries. I'm Aisha Saliu. Thank you so much for joining us.